Hello everybody and welcome to Green River 2017. This is a map which has very recently been converted to FS17. It used to be an FS15 map, but now it is back for another version of the game, which I think is brilliant. I haven't actually played this map before, but apparently it's been very successful, so I hope we're going to have a lot of fun on it. So this map actually features quite a lot of very large fields. They are um, actually different in they're all very different in shape but there are a few square fields as well which will be very useful when it comes to having a worker um but yeah having the variety the curved fields too for example field number 33 uh that'd be a nice change from the more square fields in fact some of the fields are a very interesting shape overall so i think it's going to be a good map to play on now this is not going to be a realistic series it's just going to be a normal casual gameplay. Um, so I will be buying various different mods throughout the series to try them out and the next series we do after Oakfield Farm, which looks to be the valley, the old farm, that will be the realistic series and I won't just be randomly buying different mods to try out on there. So we're going to keep it on to this one. So just as uh, I think probably the first thing that I should say is um, yeah, when I start to buy various different mods to try out, um, please don't complain if it's on this map. Obviously, if I start doing it on the other map, then fair enough. But yeah, this is going to be the sort of trying out new stuff map and just generally having a lot of fun, hopefully. So we start off with a Toyota Hilux just here in a grey colour, 2.8. And we also have a John Deere just over here, the 7710, with the Joskin Trans KTP 2250 trailer, which I think is going to be brilliant for just, you know, dumping stuff like manure, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, before we... Um, before I ramble on too long, let's just take a look here. And we're at the shop, as you can see. We need to go over to the farm, which is very close to here. We own field number 27 and field number 18. So, yeah, what we'll do is we'll drive over to the uh, the yard and we'll be able to put the Hilux on the back of here on uh, Follow Me so that we can obviously drive back to the shop to pick up the other machines we're going to buy. Now, this, as far as I'm aware, is the Netherlands. So, it's not an American map or anything, although it does have some fairly big fields. Um, but all the same, it's obviously going to be a really good opportunity to try out some fairly big equipment, which is uh, the majority of what we have. Most of the machines are fairly large. But after having a, you know, like Oakford Farm, an English map, it is nice to be able to branch out a bit and try out some big stuff. And on the uh, Valley of the Old Farm, when we start that series, we will be using the smaller stuff and hopefully actually some more vintage equipment as well. So we're going to have a good contrast between... Oh, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Sorry. Did you, uh, maybe the highlights crash into it. Oh no, it didn't. Good. Yeah, I need to get used to it. I've been playing too much. Well, actually, no, you can't really play too much of the Oakville Farm because it's just so good. But yeah, I'm so used to the UK roads, like real life as well. Uh, yeah, I was driving the left hand side of the road. So from here, don't drive into the ditch. And it looks like this is one of the entrances to our yard. So I'll just pull over run in front of the car and get it open. Whoop. That will do nicely. Good. Anyway, all of our money is here from the previous episode of um, Asante Lepacho. Seems to be an issue over there. That's how you sort it. Turn the traffic on and then turn it off again. Or the other way around. So, although it's going to be the sort of mess around, sort of have fun, seriously good fun uh, series, I'm still going to try and put everything away and keep it neat. It's not an unrealistic series. It is still going to be played properly. But, yeah, it's not going to be done, like, super realistically. Love the Hilux, though. Uh, I actually did use the Hilux in my Wexcom Manor Farm series this time last year. In fact, before this time last year, January. And, yeah, I haven't had it in the game since, so it's nice to have it back. I do like it. So... I think we'll park this up over here. We should probably just keep the farm gates open all the time. We might as well. It's not like we're trying to stop people from getting into the yard. Because we need to get in and out of here all day long. So, that was good driving. A massive gap, and I went and crashed pretty much into the pillar. Hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. But there we go, yeah. The first tractor, the first trailer. Love it. The 7710. And we even have chains going over the front weights. Is that the correct number plate for the country? Not sure. That could be Germany. 
Anyway, yes, let's leave and we'll open the gate. It looks like this gate is either automatic or we have to get out and do it. I don't think it's going to be static. Let's just see. Yeah, there we go. It's got a beacon and everything. Fancy stuff. Nice. Anyway, yeah. Now, one thing I'm going to do is not buy everything straight away. Yes, we do have a GTA 5 logo in here. It is a Deej Modding's um, avatar. But yeah, um, we don't want to buy everything straight away because we need to be a bit more conservative with the money. We don't want to just be spending all the money straight away just to discover that we have no money left to buy anything else. Which is the mistake I've made in, let me just think here, uh, every series to date. So maybe this time we're actually going to stick with quite a bit of money. But having said that, we do need to buy the bare minimum. For example, the Combine Harvester. We have to have a Combine Harvester. I've chosen the T670i, which is a pretty expensive Combine. But at the same time, it's a nice Combine Harvester. So we do need to get it. Although, yeah, that might be a, a long-term thing. We may start off with something a little bit smaller. For example, the Kamiya C6. <laughs> Just because we don't have that much of a field. Although... Um, yeah, it would be nice to get like a used version of this, which I can do. I can I can sort of create a used price for one because um, we don't have all the money in the world. The other things we'd like to buy are other tractors, and I've downloaded quite an array, which is nice. We've got the 8RT, which I think is a very nice tractor to have. The 7R, just here, which is, again, pretty expensive. The 1630, which is very reasonable in price, which we've actually had before on the Sandy Bay series. We also have the 7710 and the 7810. Obviously, we just bought one of them, so it's fine. All sorted. We have the uh, 740 just here and the 70B. Oh, it's 220B, whatever. Uh, I think it's like a commercial council sort of version. I'm not too sure. We've got some fence. We've got the 9R. So we've got a few things, mostly John Deere. It's going to be a primarily a, a John Deere farm. But that is a nice thing. I do love John Deere a lot. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a problem with anybody. At least I hope it isn't. So, <laughs> yeah, now we need to discover what we should buy. We're not going to go crazy. I do need to be able to buy um, cultivators. We, we can't go without the cultivators. For example, this is required. We're going to buy it. It's a big cultivator. They're big fields. The drill, again, that is very important that we have something fairly big. We do have the planter, just there, but the price is obviously extreme. That is a little bit too extreme, though. We're not going to go with anything so huge. In fact, that is brilliant, this one here. But we do need to have a tractor to cater to the uh, the extreme widths of these. So, you know, it's just these things where we have to just focus on prices more than anything else. I mean, that that is decent. That is a good one to go for. Because then at least we have a cultivator, a drill, and in a minute we're going to buy the combine harvester, like I say. But we'll probably... Um, yeah, we'll probably... Uh, not to go for the biggest, although I would like to get this fairly soon. I think, yeah, we'll just create a used version, so it'll be a much reduced price, and yeah, we'll, we'll buy that. Although, actually, uh, I could do that straight away, although in some people's eyes that is cheating. I don't know, I'll leave it for the time, but we'll buy something cheap. We only have two fields, so we can go with something like the Axial Flow or the Khmer C6. They are tiny combine harvesters, but really, what do you need? Although, again, <laughs> it's kind of the used price of the other one. Bear with me. Okay, so here we are. We have the combine harvester just here. But I must be very careful because we need to also buy a trailer for grain. Um, we have to buy the header and the header trailer. So there's a few different things we have to buy. I would go with the crawler track, but looking at our money and what we have left and what we still need to buy, I don't think we're going to be able to justify the £22,000 extra. So we're going to have to go with the standard wheels, which is still pretty good. I mean, it doesn't really matter that it hasn't got the crawler track, although in my opinion it does look better. But it's not all about looks, um, but I suppose as well it is actually better for soil compaction if that make, makes a big difference to you. So, let's just see here. We've got a trailer which is £7,500, and we also have to be able to afford a tipper, which hopefully we can do. Oh, we've got the tipper. We could just use that one. I was thinking that's more for bulk carrying, but I think at this early stage we're going to have to use it for the grain, which is fair enough. The two fields we own, they are both corn. So we also have to be able to at least afford to lease or 
buy outright a corn header. I don't want to lease in this series, but if we have to to begin with, then we just have to, really. Um, but of course, if we are going to lease, we might as well lease the biggest, as then we can get the job done quicker. So it's sort of a false economy. Although this one here is cheaper, where are we? Let's just see. Yeah, although this one here is cheaper than this one here, it's smaller. So we have to own it for longer, we have to lease it for longer, meaning in the end it'll probably cost more. So we'll lease that one. Um, we're not going to lease after this, we just don't want to be leasing. We do not want to lease at all. So yeah, let's just do it. Did I buy the header? No. We'll buy the header. And one thing I do know about these headers is that one there is for something else. Or it's like a... Oh, it's for the 630. Yeah, we need to go with this one here. Because when I bought it last time, when I tried it, it didn't actually have a reel. So I don't know if it's like a, a prototype, a preliminary thing when it was being tested, or if it is actually supposed to have no reel. But yeah, we do have the correct one as well. So that has left us with £25,000. So despite wanting to not spend too much money, we've actually almost spent all of our money. It just seems so easy to do. And now I was going to actually tow the header trailer out of here with the Hilux, but it doesn't fit to this particular header. Okay, there's actually been a change of plan there. It does fit to the uh, Hilux, but I've decided I want to use this header trailer anyway, purely because it is bigger. And the other one has got a collision sticking out, which is a little bit annoying when it comes to going through these narrow spaces. So this should be a better setup. Having said that, everything else with the Combine is really good. And if you want to download any of these mods, they're all on Mod Hoster or Mod Hub. And you can uh, check out the links down below. Yeah, actually, I'm pleased they did change the header trailer. Because even that is only just big enough. Okay. That should do. Now, we're going to go over to the field and we're going to begin. That header is going straight back to the yard. And obviously this one is going on the front of the John Deere. It isn't colour coded or anything, it's no uh, colour match, but as long as we get the job done, it doesn't really matter. There we go. I think the drill and everything can stay here. So it is just going to be a case of taking the tractor and the trailer and this over to either field number 27 or 18. Are they ready to harvest? Let's take a look. Hopefully they are. Um, but we'll soon find out. They're not. Joy. <laughs> 27, 18, both are still growing. But if I actually go on here, in fact, we do need to go on here anyway, because I should think the withering is switched. It is, Joy. There we go. Let's speed some time up. Yeah, almost missed the word up there. Let's increase the rate of time. You can use the Hilux to take this back. Hopefully it's going to stay locked onto the trailer. It's so nice to have a decent pickup. I'm not suggesting anything there, but I do like the Hiluxes a lot. Is that picked up? Looks a little bit low. Oh, it is up. It's definitely up. That's going to be an issue. Quickly. That was so close. I fear that would have actually slammed into the trailer and pushed the header off. Now, do we have to turn left here? Or is there a better crossing? We do. We do have to turn left there, but I think we can probably get a better swing if we go up here. Yeah, because there's an entrance over there. We've got a much straighter piece of road just here. Okay, so I've just had to go on the wrong side of the road there so the header can actually make it around the corner. It would have been much easier if I was driving it, but I'm not, so <laughs> we're just going to have to live with it. In fact, what I could do is pull over here. I don't want to mess around too much. Ah, that's better. The towing capacity is phenomenal. Although, should it really be towing such a heavy thing down the road? Probably not. Still, here we are. Put it away. Terrible at reversing this thing, so I'll probably just have to park it over here. Or, if I can drive through a shed and park it in the middle of a shed, that'd be even easier. 
but this might be for cows. I haven't actually done a map tour yet, so there's plenty to explore. Let's just see. Open up one of these sides and just see what it is. Okay, I don't think we should be putting a header in there. That's not the wisest of ideas. I'll try and find somewhere better. Really, I should just be reversing it into one of these bays, because that is exactly what they're designed for. But I can't, for the life of me, reverse one of these things. Let's just see if I can do it. There is some progress. I've managed to get it in. That's good. Well, we can leave it on the Hilux, because we need to transfer over to the John Deere. And we're going to take it over to the field. Let's hope it's almost ready. We may be doing it in the next day. Yeah, we'll do field 27 first the day after this day but it doesn't stop us from being able to set things up so from here the field is actually oh, I should have gone the other way yeah that's the problem with not doing a map tour it's always worth doing a map tour but we'll just go up here and we'll try and find the next turning left while we take in the sights very pretty as usual, most of these maps are. And we've got uh, the river, well I think there's two rivers actually, running straight through the middle. Yeah, I, I think that's a river on the far right of the map as well. Yeah, it was probably a cut through. So is this. Hello, just going through the residential area with the tractor. Hopefully you don't mind too much. Yeah, I think it's going to end up being a dead end. Whereas the other way was actually straight to the field. It was. It, it was totally to the field. Excuse me, businessman. I'm just trying to reverse into your driveway. Don't walk into my trailer. Oh, businessman, what are you doing? We've actually made it to field number 18 first. As it's ready, we might as well go here. And yeah, because it is going to be done as corn rather than silage, we can just keep the trailer parked at the side of the field. We'd have to go alongside. Although it would be nice. But yeah, we can just very simply tab to the tractor. So I haven't got a problem with tabbing in this series. I'll never forget the episode of The Simpsons. I forget its name, but I'll never forget the episode where Homer Simpson is working from home. And I think actually the way he does it is... He tries to get some kind of um, disability allowance or something by being obese, so he has to stay at home. It's a very odd episode, very good one though. And <laughs> he has to use his computer from home to run the power plant and stuff. And he presses tab, and he says, I think I'll order a tab. Anyway, about five, ten minutes later in the episode, he says casually, where's my tab? As if he expects his tab to turn up. Well, obviously a tab is not a drink or anything, as he might have expected. Hilarious. Maybe not that hilarious as I explain it, but I'm sure you've seen the episode. It's fairly old. It's probably from the late 90s or something. Um, no, The Simpsons is brilliant. really do love it. Although, I haven't watched it for a while. I haven't watched any of the new ones. Mainly because I don't get Sky, so... Yeah. I will have to try and catch up at some point. Anyway, here we are. Oh, I should have put the... Uh, if we can do, should have put this close to us. I look forward to being able to use the John Deere header. But we can't have everything straight away. Oh no, not this again. <laughs> Whenever I have the manual attached, I always forget the PTO, as I'm sure many people are aware. Time to make some money. Now it is going to take a while to harvest these two fields. They are pretty big, and that's pretty loud. Although the majority of this field is, well, rectangular. It's got a point on it, as you can see we're going down now, which will confuse any worker. But I could cut straight across the field and take the point off, which is possible. Then we can use a worker, we can then cart. And I think this combine's got an extremely large uh, grain tank. So we should actually be able to go for a long time without having to unload. From what I've seen of the map so far, I like it. It's flat, but that's in keeping with the area, as far as I'm aware. Never been to the Netherlands, if that's where it is. I think it is. Um, but I guess with it being flat, it makes it easy to actually farm, because there's no really tight hills and tight bends and stuff. Tight hills? 
Yeah, I don't know where I got that from. Yeah, tight bends. No steep hills. I say the weirdest things. Although, if we work across the field from this way, maybe it won't care about the point in the field. I call it a point, it's more like just a... Yeah, sharp edge. <laughs> what is this? It's diagonal, there we go. I got the word in there. You see, my mind's gone blank today. It's a diagonal. Probably due to the excitement of playing this map for the first time. I never did play in FS15. In fact, I wasn't really aware of it. But, yeah, I wish I had played it. I don't know, uh, due to the lack of experience on the map, I don't know how it's changed. We don't need to use a work yet anyway, so we'll be alright for the first headland or so. Or we'll probably do the usual three headlands, it always seems to work out that way. Then you get the most turning space. So, yeah, let's just get this done, unload the first load as soon as we're ready. Hopefully we'll get around to the trailer before we're full, but we'll soon find out. Right, well that is the second headland almost finished. It would be good if we could do a third one, um, if it's required. It's not necessarily required, but it is just, I think, good to do that, to do three. But we'll get this unloaded, it is fairly full. It has a fairly slow unload rate as well, but not to worry. Um, I suppose it has to be, when it being such a big tank, it just takes a while to do. I guess the rate itself is all right. Yeah, it is, because if you look at the rate that the trailer's filling, that is still fairly fast, just because there is so much in the tank. So that is 55% full so far. It's definitely not going to fill the trailer. Um, but yeah, we'll fill it before we finish today's episode. I put that on a worker, and amazingly it's managed to take it all in. It isn't missing anything. Right, 75%... Yes, yeah, so there's quarter, 25% space left. So, yeah, um... We are wobbling. Maybe that's the... Let's just see. Is that... Sometimes it can be the trailer you put on. Yeah. Getting the perfect setup is usually pretty tough. The wobble doesn't bother me too much. Unless it is ground response, because again, that can sometimes create a bit of an issue. Right, okay. So, while it's doing that, we'll just check up on things. You can see the progress we're making here. It's gone all purple. I'm going to do this section as a separate piece, just because this is obviously so easy to harvest. That can be done later. Uh, and then 27. 27 is actually a pretty tough field. And I don't think we own any more fields. Usually when I look at a massive map like this, it's so easy to miss one. But I'm pretty sure it is just 18 and 27. If there is another one, somebody will let me know, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't think so. Look at the size of the forest down here. And here. And there. Massive. Right. Well, I better get back in the tractor. Get ready to do some casting. Does it wobble when it's moving? No. Yeah, it could be ground response. But what do you think? What do you think to this map so far? Obviously, you haven't seen too much if this is the first time you've seen it. If you've already played this map, then obviously you'll know a lot about it, and no doubt you'll have a lot of different things to tell me, uh, to look out for, and things to do. But so far, I'm very happy with this being the next map. Let's just see how much space that actually is when it turns around. Do we need to do a third headland? It seems to be a lot of space, actually.
Nah, tons of space. Not a problem. Good trailer too. I think it's very good for anything, really. You can carry anything. Multi-fruit, uh, all the different um, products from the uh, mining construction economy map, and well, obviously the standard crops as well. We've just got to wait for 25% to fill it up. It's almost time to unload the combine and to unload the trailer, obviously, so we need to make sure we go to the correct place for the corn. Now, I don't really ever do corn like this, but it looks like the balloon tree is the best price at the moment. So, the balloon tree is down the bottom there. Oh, it's fairly, yeah, very simple to get to, actually. Just opposite the farm, there's a road. It goes down to there. So, yeah, it should be dead easy. Right, the combine is turning, which means it's going to be ready to unload as we head back down here. And with a bit of luck, there'll actually be more in the combine than what fits in the trailer. It has been going for a while. So let's find out and see. How full? Ah, oh, yeah, it's pretty full. Yeah, it should be perfect. Ready to unload with some enthusiasm. Gotta say though, it's a nice combine and yeah, nice mod as well. So, yeah, that is almost full. Put a little bit more in the back if we can do. And there we go, the combine is not empty and we're continuing. Yeah, if I can do, I'd like to put a bigger tractor on the trailer. Obviously, at the moment, it's out of the question completely, but we're looking to buy, we are looking to buy this one here. Just scroll across. Uh, yeah, the 7R, which is much bigger. So that'll be a nice addition. I might also turn off ground response if that is what's causing the issue. So from here, uh, we'll take the usual uh, track down. Yeah, across here. It's very simple. That is what's nice about this map. It's very easy to navigate as all the roads are fairly straight. There's no twisty, turny lanes. Both are nice. It's nice to have both in a map, but. Um, yeah, like for example in my situation, if you're doing one map with the English style really tight roads and then another map with the straight roads, it's just like the perfect balance. You have everything. You couldn't you couldn't ask for anything better. And it also keeps everybody happy because some people prefer this kind of map, some people prefer the uh, Oakford farm map, and well yeah, it just caters to every need. Which is possibly where I've gone wrong in the past. For example, running two English maps or I don't think I've ever done it before, but if I ran two USA maps or two very flat maps, um, yeah, you don't have the balance, so it's very important to have the balance. From here, we have to go left, then we take the next turn right after that. Here we are. Oh, okay. Um, I see. Oh, it goes down. Private road. But... Are we going to fit around the corner? Yes, we are. Must be a, well, private area, which you have to go to to get to the shop. It's a good job we have the key to unlock that post bag there. Oh, don't come off the road. I see. I see how this is working. I should have gone left out of the uh, right out of there to avoid the private road that makes perfect sense now because actually yeah you're joining up with the main road just here now which one is the one we want to go to there are two the balloon tree farm shop and the balloon tree I would say it's the top one so if we continue around here yeah, because that's for wool. I'd say that is for wool. We should have a pit, hopefully. Ah, we do. Fantastic. Uh, I'm not expecting miracles here, but it would be nice to get uh, £18,000. What do we finish off with? 16,457. Still not bad. 
And we're going to leave it there. I think, yeah, if we can get a lot of it done with a worker, probably through time lapse, then we can progress fairly quickly. We need to get that field replanted very rapidly, as those two fields are vital to us. But we'll try and get that done in the next episode. So please post your feedback down below. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.